When you're recording in the mobile or home studio, it's a good idea to use a metronome or a click track. This can keep you on the grid and keep your performance in time. But when should you consider not using a metronome? In this video, we're gonna talk about it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live. Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And we're back here in GarageBand on my iPad where I like to do a lot of my recording. And in fact, I'm about to record a new song, a new acoustic song called Fence Sitter. Now at the moment, it is literally at one acoustic guitar and a vocal. And I thought this would be a good time to demonstrate why you don't always need to be on the grid, why you don't always need to use a metronome or a click track like we have here in GarageBand. Band. So let's dive in and set up this track and I'll explain as I go what I'm going to be doing. So we'll start at the start. It's a good place to start. We'll tap on create song here in GarageBand and I'm going to select the audio recorder track because I'm going to be using my microphone here, the Audio Technica AT2020 through my Steinberg UR22C interface. I know you can't see that. It's off to the side and links to those will be out in the description as well as a link to a video up there where I show you the setup for the Steinberg interface. But let's jump in here and set up this track now. So we're going to go. The first thing I like to do is go to my song sections here and what we're going to do I'm going to go with just manual and I'm just going to throw this one out we're not going to use song sections in this one but I'm going to give myself plenty of space say 240 bars but the bars aren't going to matter and you're going to find that out in a minute and we're going to go out of there so there you go we've got plenty of space there now now, why would I not want to have a metronome? Well, when you're recording a song with acoustic guitar or sometimes with piano or other instruments, especially where it's a singer-songwriter solo kind of song, sometimes you want a little bit more feel and you don't actually want a metronome in your, in your song. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to come in, I'm going to turn off the, the count, I'm going to turn off the everything here. Metronome level I can put to zero, but none of that really actually matters because while I leave the metronome light here off, it's not going to play. So if I wanted the metronome on, I turn that on like that. But if I hit record on this now, I'm not going to hear any metronome sound at all. Now, you may be cringing at the moment and saying, Pete, if you want to then come in and add different parts, if you want to use any virtual instruments, if you want to use the grid, loops, quantizing, all of those things, you're going to need to have a time, right? You're going to need to be in time. The thing is, I don't want to do that with this song. And sometimes if you're finding your song is sounding too mechanical, too robotic, too much like it's on the grid, you maybe not want that. You maybe don't want to have a song that sounds so perfect. You may want to vary your speed a bit. And what I'll do is I'll play a take through on the guitar in a moment and you'll see what I mean, that I won't keep to a normal speed. And if I had a metronome on there, it just simply wouldn't work. So we're all set up here now. We're ready to go, ready to hit record. I've got my Audio Technica microphone here ready to go. I'm going to go and grab that one, <laughs> grab my guitar and set up and let's record a take of this song. Okay, so I'm set up here. I've got the guitar. Now I've put the microphone down a little bit so that I'm not breathing into it. So it's pointed down towards around about the 12th fret on my acoustic guitar. It's a finger style part. So I'm going to need to be pretty close to the microphone here to record. Now what I'll do is we've, you can see here we're set up and I've, uh, I need to dial in the gain here. But firstly, let's turn on that channel on the mixer. And now you can hear me coming through both microphones here. So over here, this is the microphone for the guitar. And if you're having issues here, by the way, it may be that your monitoring is not on. So if you're not hearing anything through, if I turn the monitor off, then I'm just back on this microphone here. If I turn it back on, then I've got this microphone coming through here. So we just need to dial in the gain. So I'll just play a little bit here to make sure we get it right. That might be a little bit quiet. We'll just turn it up a little bit. You can hear in the background noise here that if the gain goes up too much, we're going to get too much background noise. So I'm going to bring it down until it's just above that noise floor because we can boost it a little bit afterwards. We'll just turn that monitoring off. That's going to be annoying. We can boost it a bit afterwards, but uh, we don't want to. Anyway, this is a, <laughs> this is a video about... Uh, about metronomes, not necessarily about recording. So let's uh, let's turn the monitoring on and let's record a take of these guitars.
So there you go, we've recorded in that guitar take. Wasn't perfect by any stretch, and here's the problem. It's going to be pretty quiet. So the first thing that I would probably do here, and I will do in fact, is add here. We're going to add it in as a clean channel. So we're going to come in here. We'll change this one to a, not custom, but fun and clean. And then we'll bring this on across. So we just want to drag this over to a clean channel and then we want to tap it, tap it again and merge it. This is just going to normalize the audio and mean that we're going to be able to see our waveform a lot better. So it'll just take a couple of seconds here while it merges that track. We need to trim down the track as well because it <laughs> has to merge it all the way across. And there it is. So there is our acoustic performance. We'll drag this. When it comes back up, we'll drag this back up to here, drop the volume to make sure we're not going to blow our head off. And then if we come to a part here, we'll just turn the volume down and hit play. And there it is. So it's good to go. Now, here's the challenges, right? We now can't use <laughs> any sort of guidance if we want to overdub a part. If I made a flub, which I did in a couple of places, we're not going to be able to replace that very easily. So I'll need to play the whole thing again and just hope that it's around about the same sort of timing. But in some of the places, so if we come right to the end here, one what I couldn't do if I was on the grid is this sort of slow down, speed up thing for a bit of emphasis at the end. So let's just zoom on in on this last section. I'll show you what I mean. So if we play this last part back here... So what BPM is that at? No idea. It's a bunch of different ones. It's slowing down, it's speeding up, it's using varying tempo, and that's just something that we can't support on a click track. And if I tried playing that to a click track, it would sound quite horrible. So this is what I need to go for. Now, clearly I need to get in a better environment. You heard a lot of background noise in that guitar, so I need to record it a bit better, but this is a good start. This is my scratch track here, and this, this is a way that I'm going to record this song. So yes, it's a little bit more challenging than if you're recording to a click, but if you've got a song that's expressive that you want to do something like this with, then consider going off the grid and not using a metronome. I hope you found this useful. There's two more videos linked down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon, and I'll see you next time.